The Great Lakes have always fascinated me. I'm biased since I live near one of them. And because of my bias, that's what this video is about. Time to learn some important facts and just general 101 on the Great Lakes. For those who don't know, the Great Lakes are a group of closely connected freshwater lakes in North America. They are generally considered to be five lakes, Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario. Lake St. Clair, Nipigon, and a bunch of smaller lakes are a part of the same system, but are not considered to be Great Lakes. Sorry guys. They were formed from receding glaciers during the last ice age 12,000 years ago. In terms of Earth's history, they're practically brand new. The lakes are unique because there is nothing quite like them on Earth. They're the largest freshwater lake system on the planet. So big that they're practically like seas. If you live on their coast, you would see, ah, the similarity. They're not seas though. Many think this is because lakes are freshwater and seas are salty, but that's not the case. This is because of two factors, elevation and relation to the ocean. Seas like the Caspian or Black are at sea level, which is pretty obvious, while lakes such as Superior are higher in elevation. Superior being at 601 feet above sea level, while the Caspian is at 92 feet below sea level. The next factor is relation to the ocean. A lake is a body of water surrounded by land, Technically, that would make the Caspian a lake, but there is the elevation factor. The Great Lakes, while large, don't connect to the ocean in a way to categorize it as a sea. So, they're very sea-like lakes. They're not seas, they're lakes. Sea, lake, redfish, bluefish. All these lakes are a part of a single waterway, connected either naturally or by man to be one of the most important transportation systems in the world. Used by native tribes, Europeans, and later the United States, in the 18th century the Great Lakes were crucial to expanding and building the early US. Like how the railroad built the west, the lakes built the midwest. Shipping and trade propped up cities along the coast, such as Cleveland, Detroit, Toledo, and Chicago. Michigan and Ohio fought a war against one another over an area called the Toledo Strip in order to gain more coast of Lake Erie. Even though today the area is considered a rust belt, this used to be the core of the United States. Most of Canada's population lives in the Great Lakes watershed, with cities either on the coast of the lakes or on rivers connected to them. Very few live on the coast of Lake Superior though. It lies on the Canadian Shield, which makes farming difficult. Lake Superior is the largest of them all, being the largest lake by surface area, second largest if you count the Caspian as a lake, and third largest in volume. By area, it's the size of Austria. Even if Michigan and Huron were defined as one body, Superior would still be larger in terms of volume. Lake Michigan and Huron surround the lower peninsula of the state of Michigan, forming the distinct oven mitt shape. They're actually one single lake, called Michigan-Huron. Both are connected to one another, and were mistakenly named separately, the western portion being called Michigan, and the east called a Huron. If corrected, it'd be the largest lake in the world by surface area. Lake Erie is the smallest in volume, but is shared by many different cities, Detroit, Toledo, Buffalo, and Cleveland to name a few. In recent years, due to outsourcing, these once industrial cities have begun to fall to urban decay. Lake Ontario is the smallest in surface area, Toronto sits on its coast. While the Great Lakes are extremely large and make up a prominent feature on the North American map, they are not the only freshwater lakes on the continent. Canada is home to almost 3 million freshwater lakes. Great Bear Lake and Great Slave Lake are larger than Lake Erie, and Lake Winnipeg is larger than Lake Ontario. In recent years, pollution and invasive species such as Asian carp have put the ecosystem of the Great Lakes at risk. In fact, an algae bloom fueled by pollution in Lake Erie made the drinking water too dangerous to consume for a few days. I would know. I was there. The issue of conserving these lakes will become an important topic in upcoming years. For a water system that contains 21% of the world's freshwater, it will be interesting to see how human development affects the Great Lakes. Fishing and trade are still vital to the economies of this region, as well as the water from these lakes is crucial to the United States. Want to know more about a specific region of the world, or the US in general? Say in the comments, like on Facebook, and subscribe if you have not done so. This is Cody from Geography Hub.